Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We're talking about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the sophomore record from Czarface, titled Every Hero Needs a Villain. So I occasionally get asked by non-fans of hip-hop how I can possibly excuse the lyrical content, which can focus on crass materialism, unbridled hedonism, rampant drug abuse, and violence. And normally after I roll my eyes, seriously, what genre beyond the most sterile of bubblegum pop and Christian music, or any art, hasn't touched on some of these subjects in some form or another, I have to inform that, the, that there's different varieties of hip-hop and how seriously you can take all of them. Now, some of the more political material, like on Kendrick Mars to Pimp a Butterfly, I take various seriously, like he intends that. And even with that and a far less violent message compared to the incendiary material you get from someone like Run the Jewels, you're still gonna get cretins on Fox News misinterpreting it and trying to ram down a message of that it's promoting violence. Seriously, the only time Fox remotely gets close to discussing hip-hop or the black community with any sort of credence that I can respect is, ironically, when Killer Mike is guest starring there. But there's always been a competitive element to hip-hop and that tends to mean that confrontational or outright violent language is used, often with some pretty stark imagery. And we search towards horrorcore or gangster rap, things get a little bit trickier, especially when you acknowledge that it might be entertainment for the consumer or the critic like myself, but it might be very real for the artist creating it who potentially grew up in that environment, and consideration and empathy should be shown for that person. Of course, there's another way to get around this. Make the violence so hyperbolic and exaggerated that it almost becomes like a cartoon. It doesn't mean that the message is any less potent, but it's conveyed in a slightly different way, a little bit more exaggerated. Analogous to the way that Tarantino smuggles in his message movie through the guise of B-movie exploitation. Run the Jewels can walk this line, so can Action Bronson. Hell, go some places, so can Eminem. And this is where we run into Czarface. Half the underground hip-hop duo 7L and Esoteric, and half the Wu-Tang Clan member Inspected Deck. Now, I'll admit not always being the biggest Wu-Tang fan. Part of it is that I just haven't had all the time to fully unpack and decode all of their albums across their storied histories, with several solo members having full discographies of their own, like Ghostface Killa. But Czarface has always interested me, if only because the lyrics overloaded with references to comic books, pulp sci-fi, and pro wrestling of all things merged with sample heavy old school production remind me a lot of MF Doom in a very good way. I guess if I was nitpicking, I wasn't the biggest fan of their debut, which was solid to be sure, but occasionally lacked killer standout songs and did drag a little bit by the very end. But with a stronger feature list than ever for this album, I figured I'd give it a listen. Was it worth it? Well, uh, yeah, it definitely was worth it. And honestly, Every Hero Needs a Villain by Zarface is one of those albums that doesn't really give me a lot to say about it. It's uniformly solid, pretty damn hysterical all throughout the vast majority of it, taking the formula that worked on the debut and amplifying it to great effect. If you like the debut album, you're gonna love this. Because it's basically a more colorful, more punchline overloaded brand of it with better guest stars and significantly stronger individual songs. And if you like East Coast inspired boom bap with a real sense of humor, some great chemistry, and a personality rooted in the goofier, pulpier elements of nerd culture, and I happen to like a lot of that, you'll have a ton of fun with this album. So let's talk about our two MCs, Esoteric and Inspected Deck. And honestly, they're both solid as hell in terms of technical wordplay and their construction of their bars. Inspected Deck is a little bit more calculated and his cadences are often a little bit more structured, but Esoteric often gets his stronger punchlines that are a little bit funnier or a little bit more clever. Both of them can swap verses back and forth and they've got a ton of chemistry. Honestly, to the point where I did struggle a little bit to tell them apart. They've got similar vocal tones if you don't listen for some of the subtleties and you just gotta be careful there. There are a few points where I find the rhyming can slip up a little bit and for nearly an hour of constant spinning some of the bars do start to run together a little bit you kind of expect that but really so much of it is such high quality that I've got very few complaints it also helps that the majority of the guest stars are on their a game method man's verse on nightcrawler is awesome hell all of nightcrawler is awesome but we'll come back to that jizza was very solid on when gods go mad while I was initially kind of hit and miss on juju from the beat nuts verse on junkyard dogs I did eventually warm to it after a couple of listens my favorite verse on this album comes from R.A. the Rugged Man on Good Villains Go Last, though. That's more because it was so hyperbolic, it just became hilarious in the best possible way. Oddly enough, though, I didn't love MF Doom's verse on Kabang. It was incredibly well-structured, to be sure. I really liked all his different rhyming there, but the free association vibe of the content didn't really connect as well as I wanted. The other verse I didn't really love was Mayhem Lauren's verse on Deadly Class. Not a bad verse, per se, but Inspected Deck and Esoteric were just on a different level on that song, and it did unfortunately show. Now, granted, there's a 
another major player who deserves a lot of credit here, and that's 7L, who's working with Spot of Four on the production, and wow, a lot of this really clicks with me. Mostly through the usage of a lot more live drums with great texture to supplement the slightly lo-fi sample-heavy production. And really, the very few moments where I feel the samples ran, let's say, a little bit long, most notably on the Han shot first argument on Red Alert, only slightly redeemed by the exasperated British interviewer, which was pretty funny, or the beat and synth choices didn't really come together like the slightly off-rhythm high guitar lick on Deadly Class, these moments are far outshone by the places where things did work and work amazingly well. The biggest changes in the interjection of heavier, more rock-inspired beats and instrumentation, which is only a positive when you're dealing with subject matter that is very much larger than life, or at least it thinks that it is. So the strings that punctuate the melody on the chunky riff on Zardicus, the ominous chug of the great Zar guitar, the beefier, noisier percussion against the warped guitars and sleigh bells and junkyard dogs, the explosive progression on Sergeant Slaughter, the fantastic cymbal timber and texture on even Gods Go Mad against the horns and the guitar, the multiple change-ups that still manage to feel cohesive on Escape from Zarkham Asylum, and the melodic switches from bass, guitars, and fragmented keyboards on Sinister, they're just freaking awesome! And then there's Nightcrawler, easily my favorite song on the album with a distinctive melodic group and a ridiculously memorable chorus against fantastic textured drums. Other critics have already pointed out the easy comparison to early productions from the RZA, and yeah, Nightcrawler definitely earns it. Oh, I love that song! Now this takes us all to lyrics and themes, and honestly this is where I have the least to say because really, every hero as a villain is pretty simple in terms of casting our intrepid MCs as fearsome gangsta villains, lyrically decimating a mainstream that can't hope to hold up with punchline after punchline. And there are so many great bars from song after song, interweaving references, samples, and just damn great wordplay that I find more every single time I listen through this album. It's not especially kicking all that seriously, although viciously castigating a less lyrical scene in hip-hop always wins a lot of points with me. But then again, that's part of the point. Less capable MCs might rely on a lot of pop culture references to make their material more interesting or compensate for a lack of individual personality, called it the family guy syndrome. But Esoteric and Inspector Deck use it to pepper their already strong material with a ton of flavor that frequently really is funny along with just being cutting as all hell. And as such, this section should easily just descend into me listing off some great punchlines, but I'm not going to do that because that takes away from some of the jokes and some of these you really want to be surprised. And while I do find some of the samples to be played a little bit too broad, the Superman reference on Sergeant Slaughter in particular felt probably a little bit flat for me, it does fit the pulpier sort of vibe and I'll admit if you can get in that mindset, you will really like it. So yeah, in the and this record will not exactly be for everyone. If you can't groove with the slightly silly, definitely over the top, MF Doom meets Wu-Tang style, I understand why. And even though I have zero problem with the boom bap style and definitely thought that they brought enough heft and ruggedness to the guitars and drums to make it really stand out as unique, I can see why some will consider this a little bit dated, even though I'd strongly disagree. But yeah, for me, Every Hero Needs a Villain by Zarface is so much fun, I can't help but recommend it. An easy 8 out of 10, definitely a recommendation for any hip-hop fan, particularly if your tastes run a little bit nerdier like yours truly. But even if they don't, if you want to hear some kick-ass lyricism and some fantastic beats, definitely give this a listen you will not regret it. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. Anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I'd be more than happy to give you a listen. But until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.